Thank the member and recognize the member from Vancouver Point Grey. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Uh, we've had the opportunity to introduce a number of people in the gallery here today, people who've come from all over the world to BC to contribute their skills and their efforts to our province. These people came to Canada and to British Columbia because they believed in our strong education system, in our democratic system that would provide them with a fair chance to succeed. But we are letting them down. The federal government has cut funding for English language training at BC colleges and universities. Decades of excellence and experience in English language training are under threat. The consequences for students, current and future, have been as overwhelming as this government's response has been underwhelming. The note on Kwantlen Polytechnic University's website concerning English as a Second Language Training, a school where the Minister of Advanced Education himself served on the board, tells the entire story. And I quote, if you are a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident, we are not accepting applications. That outcome is not unique to Kwantlen, but is being implemented across the province following this absurd decision. And what has our provincial government done in response? Have they flown to Ottawa with distinguished graduates of BC English language training to demand that funding be preserved? Have they held press conferences with students and teachers in BC to insist that Ottawa not abandon them? Has the Minister of Advanced Education even gone to a single rally of students and teachers trying to save their programs? I am sorry to say that the answer to all of these questions is no. But it's not as if this government doesn't have a position on this issue. If you'd like to know their true position, you need only ask the federal government. On December 12th, the federal minister responsible for immigration said they were grateful for the support of the provincial government in cutting these very successful programs out of colleges and universities in BC. Quote, we've actually done it with the agreement of the provincial government. I've been working very closely with the member for Prince George Vailmont on this transition. She supports it. The premier supports it. The government supports it. The Premier supports it and the government endorses it. Have you ever heard anything so bizarre? A government that purports to represent the interests of tens of thousands of British Columbians who are first or second generation immigrants to BC supports and endorses the elimination of free and low cost English language training in BC colleges and universities. I have brought to this house real stories of real students whose dreams have been or would be made real by the same programs whose end this government supports and endorses. Armando, who's in his early 30s, served for eight years in the Philippines with the armed forces. He came to BC to make a better life. Quote, I finished the ESL program at Camosun, and I'm now in the plumbing department and I'm doing well because of the ESL. That they trained me how to speak, how to communicate, how to absorb the culture in this country. In a month I'll be done. And I'll do the job, I'll do the work that I like, and I'm happy. I can imagine installing the sewer, storm drainage, installing those sprinkler, installing those water heaters for the comfort of people for this community, and I'm so happy and blessed to do that. Sharon was brought here by her parents from China. Quote, I finished my English grade 12, but it wasn't good enough for the university and the college studies. If you cancel this program, I have nowhere to go. I cannot go back to my high school. I cannot go back to China. And I cannot take my program because my English is not good enough. So it's just like nowhere to go. Natalia from the Ukraine, quote, I have been living here for over five years. Maybe you know right now in Ukraine, not a good political situation. I have a degree in economics and I worked as an economist, statistics in the government. So I would like to continue work in my professional skills, but I understand I need to improve my academic English. I have been living here over five years. But I couldn't study here because I didn't have permanent resident. I only had a working visa. And every day I was thinking about when can I come and take professional academic English classes. Right now, starting from since January, I took these classes. But I heard this bad news about the funding cut and I feel so disappointed because like this news cut my dream. How can this government endorse a plan that throws away decades of teaching experience in this area? Decades of success for new Canadians and the dreams of new British Columbians who rely on these programs. How can making high quality English language training in BC universities and colleges available and affordable to new Canadians be a partisan issue? And if it's not a partisan issue, why is this government not working to defend these programs? 
I look forward, Honourable Speaker, to hear how this government justifies their silence on this issue. Member from Vancouver Point Grey. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. It's clear that the member understands time limits about as well as he understands this issue. <laughs> it, it, uh, it's, it's clear, based on the response, that the member in this government has no idea what is happening in this province. We've got a gallery full of people here, Honourable Speaker, uh, who are here to hear about English as a second language programming, and I didn't even hear the member uh, use those words in his entire response. Uh, it, it's shocking, I, and to, to illustrate that these are real people with real issues and real concerns, not the 1990s, today, here in British Columbia, two more quotes in my final two minutes. Hassam from Egypt. I have my degree in mechanical engineering, specialist in HVAC, air conditioning systems. I'm the father for three daughters and one son. I have a lot of experience from my ex-job, and I want to transfer it here to my community to belong. I found the first difficulty I faced was my language. Therefore, I decided to obtain the courses I need to improve my skills in language and the first step to be in the community. It's not just language, but also they teach us how to behave in the new country and the culture for the Canadians. And Linda from the Philippines. I've been in Canada for five years now. Right now, I am doing elderly care, caring for an 86 years old woman. I work 12 hours a day, three and a half days a week, and I'm studying English right now. My goal is to be an LPN. I'd really like to be an LPN so I can continue my work as a medical professional. Now that makes me worry because I have to still do three English levels before I can do that. Honourable Speaker, these new British Columbians came here bringing unique connections to trading partners the world over. They came with high levels of skill. These students, the students with whom the Minister of Advanced Education in this province refuses to meet, the students whose programs elimination this government supports and endorses, consistently say the same thing. They came here because of the opportunities available in education, because they believe that BC is a place that values education as a priority, as a major economic advantage. I call on this government to prove them right, to show that this government cares about their opportunities and their, pro their promise, to take up their cause with Ottawa and to demand the continuation of these programs. The end of these programs will prove to be a source of continuing embarrassment a disincentive for talented immigrants interested in our province, and ultimately, a cost for everyone in our province that will be paid for generations to come. Thank you, Honourable Speaker.